Good morning. It's Jeffrey Christian, CPM Group. It's five minutes after 10 o'clock on Tuesday, the 29th of August. Silver is trading around $24.22. Uh, it's been trying to test 24.50, having broken above 24 last week. Gold's around 19.40 right now. Uh, maybe a little bit lower than that. I want to talk about silver today. There's been a lot of discussion about metal being shifted from eligible inventories registered against the COMEX to registered uh, inventories. And a lot of the information has missed certain points. So I'll we'll talk about that in a second. But first, this chart's important enough that I'm using it twice today. Here it is. This is the important thing to look at the September COMEX futures open interest. And you can see prior to June, it was less than 100 million ounces. July is an active traded month as is September. So when you looked at early June, you saw a very large open interest in the July contract. Over the course of June, those shorts mostly rolled forward into the September futures. They bought back their short positions in July and they sold uh, short positions in, uh, uh, in September futures. Happens with active months all the time across commodities. Nothing nefarious, nothing unusual, nothing specific to silver. This is the way futures markets work. Hedgers who have long physical positions hedge those positions with short futures positions, and then they roll them forward because they want to remain hedged. Happens all the time. You saw the September futures open interest rise from less than 100 million ounces at the beginning of June to more than 600 million ounces by the end of July, right? So it was a little bit unusual because you saw uh, open interest stay higher longer into the delivery month in July than you, uh, you typically see. And that had to do with the fact that some of those shorts planned to deliver into their, those, those positions. Over the course of August, we've seen September open interest go from more than 600 million ounces to 110 million ounces as of the open of business yesterday. It's the market doing what it normally does. Now, sometimes there's congestion in that role and the price will spike up for a couple days. Uh, that's probably not going to happen in the September contract. It's possible, uh, but it's not. Uh, it doesn't seem most likely right now. Now, over the last few days, the silver market has heard about how there were 7.4 million ounces of eligible inventories that were stored at the J.P. Morgan's depositories in New York City. This is silver that is eligible for delivery but not registered. And there were 7.4 million ounces last Thursday, the 24th, that was moved from shifted. I mean, it wasn't physically moved. It's just that the depository receipts were delivered to the clearinghouse. And those eligible uh, stocks became registered stocks with the COMEX clearinghouse. And 7.4 million ounces moved, uh, were, were re, uh, the depository receipts were delivered on Thursday. And a lot of people started making a big deal of it. Somebody's buying 7.4 million ounces. No, not exactly true. Or going to buy. On Friday, another 6.8 million ounces were moved from eligible to registered at the J.P. Morgan Depository. Okay, so the total for the day, 14.2 million ounces. Very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that metal. One of the things that you have to understand is that if you're long the September contract and you're planning to take deliver, you don't necessarily move metal into registered inventory. If you're short and you plan to deliver, Maybe you're an investor and you're just kind of tired of waiting for the price to get to $700. If you are short, then 
you and you have physical metal in that depository, then you might register that metal to prepare to deliver it into the September contract. And the delivery process is very straightforward. The shorts instigate the delivery. The shorts go to the clearinghouse and they say, I have a short position in the Colmex September contract. You have my warehouse receipts. I'm going to deliver that metal into my short positions. The Colmex clearinghouse then randomly assigns those contracts to entities that are long. And they say, okay, so you know we're having X ounces delivered into the September contract today. You are your clients because they don't talk directly to the clients. They talk to the uh, futures commission merchant that is managing the, that futures position. Your client gets t delivered tomorrow. And the client, by the way, either puts up 100% of the value. You know, most people trade on margins of 10, 15, 20% on the futures markets. So you've put up 15% margin and then you get delivered. If you want that metal, you've put up 100% of the value and it's yours. And you have a depository receipt saying you have that metal there. In, in the corn market, you get a, 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 a receipt for corn in a silo. You do not get a truck delivered in front of your house full of corn, the way some urban myths, uh, urban legends have it. So you get that re receipt. You have a day to say, I want to re-deliver. And you can do that and then not have to put up the metal. And there are people who will do that all the time. So right now, let's put into context this 14.2 million ounces. Right now you have 110.8 million ounces as of the start of yesterday open interest in the September contract. The September contract becomes deliverable on Thursday, the last trading day in August. The December open interest has risen to 515 million ounces. So most of that 600 plus million ounces that you saw in late July has rolled into December. There's still 110 million ounces, right? In terms of inventories, there's now 42 million ounces in registered stocks because you've had 14 million ounces there. It was down to about 28 million ounces. And people say, oh my gosh, we're running out of registered stocks. It's going to be a squeeze. Well, it's 42 million ounces now, which is pretty high uh, by regular typical standards of, of the registered stocks. You have another 234 million ounces in eligible inventories. And you have about 277 million ounces in total. Now, down below, of those inventories, 42 million ounces of registered inventories, 22.3 are at the J.P. Morgan depository. 200 of the 234 million ounces of eligible, 116, 117 million ounces are at the J.P. Morgan depository. Now, here's where it gets complicated. J.P. Morgan runs a depository. It also is a futures commission merchant, and it will buy and sell uh, futures contracts for its clients and sometimes for its own positions. J.P. Morgan, like many silver uh, bullion banks, has enormous amounts of physical silver that it has leased out to miners and smelters and refiners and fabricators and other companies that don't that, that need physical metal, but don't want to spend the money until they've actually got refined metal or refined product, uh, finished product. So J.P. Morgan has a physical position, and it hedges that with futures and other uh, der derivatives, as do other bullion banks. But J.P. Morgan runs a depository. The metal in the depository mostly belongs to depository clients. J.P. Morgan's metal mostly is not physically stored at J.P. Morgan's depository. It's off being lent to various entities that want to borrow that metal. That's what banks do, right? They have a certain depository requirement, as they do with dollars for their gold and silver. They have to have a certain reserve requirement in their depository. 
but most of the silver and gold in J.P. Morgan and other bank depositories doesn't belong to and is not owned by those banks. Very important. And when you see metal shifting from eligible to registered, and it's all at J.P. Morgan's depository, there are several things to understand. First off, J.P. Morgan has the biggest amount of metal in its depositories among COMEX depositories. It is a king in terms of the size of its depositories. The second thing is all sorts of people store and companies store metal at J.P. Morgan, including and especially a lot of other uh, futures commission merchants. So when you see metal reported at J.P. Morgan's depository being shifted from eligible to registered, that's not necessarily J.P. Morgan doing it. In fact, it's probably not J.P. Morgan. It could be J.P. Morgan acting as a futures commission merchant shifting that metal for its clients, or it could be a different futures commission merchant shifting that metal for a client. Whoever the future commission merchant is, the decision to move it from eligible to delivered rests in the minds of the clients. That JP Morgan, it's not necessarily any other futures commission merchant. It's the client of the futures commission merchant that has arranged to have that metal stored in JP Morgan's depository. J.P. Morgan's depository is a depository. It sits there, right? So that's the situation. Now, 14.2 million ounces have been moved. That suggests that someone wants to deliver into the September contract. September contract still has 110 million ounces of open interest as of the close of business yesterday. Uh, open of business yesterday. I assume that when the Monday data comes out today, that 110 million ounces will be much lower. Um, someone seems to be ready to deliver some metal. It's 14 million ounces in a, kind of in a market that is, you know, five, 600 million ounces in size and has 277 million ounces in total. So it is interesting, it's important, We'll be watching to see what happens. Many years ago, there was a very large investor in silver, and all of a sudden you start seeing this very large open interest build up into the July contract. And lo and behold, that investor delivered 25 million ounces of physical silver into the July contract without moving the price, which leads me to what brings us all here today, the price of silver. Here again is the open interest, and you can see it's gone from more than 600 million ounces in late July to less than 100 million ounces, or uh, to 110 million ounces um, as of the open of business yesterday. That data is wrong. Um, this is the price of silver. You saw 500 million ounces of silver be delayed it, be liquidated and rolled forward into December, during which time the price of silver traded between $22 and $24, 24 and a half dollars. And in fact, declined during a significant part of that. So the bulk of the September open interest has already rolled forward. It had no positive effect of driving the price up even though you had people buying 400 million ounces of paper silver. So much for the theory that uh, the paper trading on the COMEX is what determines the price of silver. 400 million ounces of purchases of September contract and the price actually fell. Um, and it not necessarily expected to rise over the next few days as we see uh, the roll. It could, depending on what the shorts and the longs want to do, uh, we'll have to wait and see. It's probably not a price of uh, event. 
Gold prices also have been relatively weak over the course of August. Uh, our expectation is that they might stay weak into September, but then we do think that they'll start picking up on a uh, longer-term basis, probably starting in the middle of uh, September. That's what we have today. You can go to our website. You can buy our yearbooks. You can buy other research and consulting services that we have. You can read about our consulting services and research, uh, and there are a lot of free reads there. I'll talk to you uh, toward the end of the week. Enjoy yourself.